I am dying inside, can you tell? <laughs> Hey guys, Ali DePierre and today I'm going to be showing you how I write papers slash essays, just kind of like the rundown of how I do that. This video is low-key inspired by one of my favorite YouTubers, Emma Angeline, who made a video similar to this a few months back, and I'll link her video down below, and I'll try to put a card somewhere up here, I don't know. For those of you who don't know me because you're clicking on this video, because you have a paper to write in who knows how many days, hours, weeks and you don't know where to start. Hi, I'm Allie. I am a second year university student and I am earning my degree in English, specifically literature and writing. Because like my my major is literature and writing, it means that I'm going to be spending the remainder of my time in university writing until my hand and my brain cut out. Which is basically like the gist of university. It's just doing and learning it until like you can't. I want to point out that I am nowhere near the perfect student. Trust me, the things I've done in the past couple hours are just very questionable. I'm just not even like half decent student. Like I can, I can act like I have it together like on this channel and like in front of other people. But, like behind like the doors of like my color coded planner, my color coded notebooks, and my like. I don't know, study with me videos. It's it's a mess. Honestly, I don't even know how like I've made it this far in my education. <laughs> anyway, this video is going to be divided into five parts, which is the topic, sources, writing, citations, and drafts. In that order specifically. Um, I'll leave timestamps down in the end cards down bar below. If you want to skip to a specific part, that's fine by me. I'll I'll help you <laughs> not watch the entirety of this video. But if you want to watch the entirety of this video, go ahead because. So um, like I said, I'm a second year university student. This is my second semester right now of my second year, and this semester I think is my most paper heavy semester. Roughly nine and a half pa papers I have to write. Currently I'm writing paper 2 of the semester, it's week 5 by the way, I am doing really well. <laughs> That's a lie. <clears throat> anyway, um, I'm just going to be using the examples of two papers that I'm focusing on. One that I've just finished the first draft on Friday and working on the second draft for tomorrow because um, I didn't get critiques so I have to kind of like figure out what I want to change myself. That's a whole other story. Um, and one that's due in April but I kind of have like a general idea of what I want to do with that paper so I'll just so first we are going to be talking about topic or like how to choose a topic I have two kind of examples for you for choosing a topic I have one where it's like a just a broad subject where I could write a paper on and the other one is more like more kind of fixed but I'll explain them in a bit. First I'm going to talk about like how to narrow down a topic. I'm going to use the example of my geography paper, which for my geography class the paper is basically write about something that has to do with something in the world, whether like social, you can, I don't know, I really don't know, but it's just something that's going on in the world and it has a whole bunch of questions. So the question, this, the way I got to this topic, which my topic is going to be gun violence in America and like how a first world country like America has like such high gun violence rates like specifically like mass shootings because this is the world I live in, this is the world I grew up in, this is the paper I'm going to write about and um, like I said this is the world. Um, I gotta talk about like anything. I could have talked about climate change, I could have talked about uh, just literally anything but I just told something for that paper that stuck out to me and that I would be interested in writing in like if you're gonna write a paper about something that you're not interested in you're not gonna want to write it and it's just gonna be absolute crap I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it if you have a topic that you're at least somewhat interested in then you're golden and there's a way of, if you have like multiple ideas to that you like want to talk about 
I, I'll talk about that in a second after I talk about my other paper because I have a, a mess that could help there. But um, my second paper for my writing class, it is a film and literature topic class. So we are focusing on adaptations. So we have, we have four papers, three of them are major papers, one of them is an adaptation proposal. So I just finished the first draft of my literary analysis for uh, The Great Gatsby. <clears throat> now, like most American students, um, I read The Great Gatsby in high school, meaning I also wrote a paper on The Great Gatsby in high school. <sighs> if I remember correctly, I think my paper in high school was about symbolism in The Great Gatsby. And I could have very easily just copied that, but I don't want to be that person who just like half asses their paper. Please don't be that student because <sighs> honestly, there's probably a way that they can find out if like you plagiarized your own paper. It's, I don't know. I, I don't know how to how how Turnitin and Verisite like work. I think I focus on the carelessness of the socialites in Gatsby. Like I said, I read the Great Gatsby before. Um, but I read it two years ago. I could have sat here and read the entire book in four days. I wasn't going to do that to myself. So I I looked up Spark Notes and Shmoo just to summarize, to, to refresh what it was about. And I was reading the, like, the summaries. I was like, oh, you know, this is really, I don't know where I'm going. I'm really, really tired and sleep deprived. I'm so sorry. So I decided to write on about Gatsby, Tom Buchanan, Daisy Buchanan, and Jordan Baker and how they're being socialites and rich and how that effect, how that causes them to be careless. I didn't really like know exactly like how I could write this paper and I'll talk a little bit more about this when I talk about the writing section but I kind of made a mind map situation where I wrote down obviously a great Gatsby in the middle and then I wrote down the four characters I just talked about because I figured that four characters would give me enough like I said the paper has to be four pages so I figured that like four characters and they're four prominent characters anyway there's maybe like I don't know one character I could have added but even then there's not enough about him that I could have added to make an entire paragraph but um that would be four body paragraphs and then an introduction and conclusion paragraph which reached five pages because the Gatsby paragraph was huge um I'm gonna talk about like how I organize everything too. But I, I made my map and then put the characters on the outside. And then I talked about like, I, like I said, my thing was carelessness. So I I wrote each thing that made them careless. To see like, can I pull enough out of this character to, my, to write at least a paragraph about them? And I did and it worked. Now, like I said earlier, like if you have like several topics you want to talk about and you don't know which one to choose, um, you can use a mind map situation for that too. In like high school, more likely college, not really, not really high school, not that much. You're going to need sources to back up your information. And um, fortunately for me and for every university student, all universities and colleges provide some sort of database for you to look up additional sources like scholarly articles, peer reviewed sources, and all that. If you're not in university or college, it's a lot harder. For those of you who need to write like big papers, I think my big paper started in 6th grade, so like from 6th grade to like 12th grade, I used Google Scholar, which isn't the best, like it's not going to slide at university because it's hard to find peer reviewed sources, which, which is what you need. A lot of school, a lot of classes, professors require them in university, so I just use um, mine, there's JSTOR, I use Academic Search Premier because for the paper that I've been writing, it's a more broad selection. My school provides a lot of places and a lot of different places have like specific sources like you may need a film database or a bible database, but I need a bible database for another paper so I couldn't use Academic Search Premier. Generally different search databases have different like ways to search. For Academic Search Premiere, you could type in like a keyword and then if you want to add more like to narrow it down, you can. That's how I found sources for both my papers. And generally, I just read the abstracts and if it seems like concrete enough for whatever I want to talk about, then I'll just save it and then later I'll read it. Like for my, my geography paper, I'm, 
I have all my sources, I have my topic, all that done and stored away. So I do till April and I probably start I have to get more sources because I have to get a lot of them. But I'll probably start during spring break, which for me is the first week of March. Maybe a little bit before that and all I have to do is just like formulate my paper. Check with your university. It's normally on like the library page website where you'll find it. Also, um, with like your the like academic or whatever, it's not only articles, sometimes they have like scanned PDF versions for free for the book. I've kind of hinted at it. Um, here, this is where I would kind of use like my, my little mind map and uh, the sources. Now, the way I write and I, I formulate things is kind of backwards. Because I know you're supposed to like start off with a topic sentence and a thesis and all that. Which is great, but um, when I first started writing papers in like middle school, early high school, I would run into the problem of like having what I want to say in a thesis but not be able to find sources to back it up or like a quote to back it up. So what I've started to do is that I would, if I had my general idea, I'd find the quotes first and then I'll do the body paragraphs first, then I'll do my introduction conclusion or at least my thesis. I, like sometimes I'll do like the first part of my introduction but like my thesis sentence I'll do last and my introduction obviously always do last because that's when you're supposed to do it but I always do my body first and I won't the way I write my paragraphs is claim evidence commentary and times how many ever times I need to like to get a paragraph or page count so for my great Gatsby literary analysis I just did claim evidence commentary for each paragraph once so claim is just like the statement you're trying to prove and you're saying like oh um Gatsby is careless because he spends a frivolous amount of money to gain the attention of one person that's my statement that's my claim my evidence would be the quotation or citation to prove that claim the commentary would be me breaking down the claim and the, the evidence, which is basically the entirety of a body paragraph or anything that needs a citation. And always cite your sources and learn how to cite them properly. I use the OWL at Purdue because, I don't know, that's what we've been taught since the sixth grade to use. So here I have two um, sample mind maps here. Um, this one is kind of one that I would suggest if you have a subject or question, basically a broad like scope of what you could write a paper on, and you have several ideas here. I just did four ideas. So obviously you can write the subject or question here if you want. Um, and then I just did the topic. So here's the topic. From this topic, you could get maybe two paragraphs off of this one topic here you can get three four one and then you from here you choose like since i can find more from this one i can do this one or this one will be easier to work with and then choose based off that one but also make sure that like they they're subjects that you generally care about this one is um a loose graph of my gatsby i didn't do a mind map for my gatsby paper but just the thought process and how I wrote my paper. So obviously I have the great Gatsby and carelessness here because I meant to write it here but it's, it's too late. But I have here a Gatsby section, a Davy section, Tom section, Jordan section, and I have big like big responses here because I don't have to go into detail like what exactly is that just so I the keywords for me because again it's for you not for anything else and then I knew that Gatsby was gonna be my main paragraph so I put him at the beginning and then just because some of what Tom was going through was also some of the same things as Daisy I put them like put Tom first and then Daisy Jordan had three different things but she had like the least amount to write about because they also have three things, but they have more examples. 
Jordan just had like one or two instances whereas Dainty herself had three or four everybody know it. Three, and Tom had several. They, Gatsby had several. So it's hard to how I chose what paragraphs to focus on. Um, and also because, I, like I said, I read the summary of the book first. It helps to at least read the summary of the book. Also have the book for quotes. Because how else are you going to say? Um, to to um, form your, your main topic. Because Carolus's for me, I knew I could find quotes for all of these things, but I only decided to get a quote for one. Maybe I'll get more quotes later. Um, I know Jordan, I have a black quote. Sentence quote, sentence quote, sentence quote. Um, for Gatsby and Daisy, get more quotes, maybe Tom. Here I'm going to quickly show you how I write my paper. So first we have to make sure that everything's formatted the right way. My computer slash pages thing doesn't start off with the font I like, so I have to change it to Times New Roman, Times New Roman, and 12 point font, and make sure it's double spaced. I also have to make sure the heading is first name, last name, your teacher slash professor's name. Um, then it's the course name or course code or class name. And then it's the date, and the way you write the date for MLA is day, month, year, and um, you spell out the month, and um, you have to put the day that it's due. So if I had a paper due tomorrow, it would be um, 9 February 2019, and then you have to put a title, always flush it to the center, and then go back to have everything on the left hand side. Um, Always make sure you indent your paragraphs here. I'm just going to write how I organize it so I know, like, okay, this is where the introduction paragraph goes. Here's this body paragraph, another body paragraph, and, um, I, I don't know, a couple more body paragraphs. Let's just go crazy. And then, a uh, conclusion paragraph. I'm sampling it the way that I did for my gas paper because that's the example I'm going to go through today. Is, um, this is, like, the first rough outline of where my paragraphs go. And I always make sure they're indented so I don't have to do it later and, or don't forget if I'm tired and I'm rushing. And then I'll go through after if I have the, like, what I know exactly which body is what. Um, well, I'm here, I think I'm just making a fake, very, very fake, uh, introduction where I'm just keyboard smashing and make it look like a paragraph. Um, because it gives the paper volume and it looks more like a roll paper even though there's a lot of non-existent words um and yeah i still have introduction there normally when i write um and i do stuff like this i'll begin and take off like introduction so like if i am exhausted and i'm not paying attention and i forget to, like i'm not paying attention at all um i don't want it to be like introduction and it goes my thing then um like i said i changed the name so like if i know what paragraph is who i'll just write it down for later when i'm not paying attention so, like the first paragraph is gatsby the second one is Tom, the third one will be Daisy, and then the last one will be Jordan. And that way, um, I know for later, that's already organized, so if I'm writing and I'm like, oh crap, I forgot which paragraph I'm going to do here, it's already taken care of. I'm also fixing it so it looks more like a paper because it's looking a little jank. <laughs> um, yeah, so. But here we're going we're gonna to sample out the Gatsby paper. And we're gonna do a bunch of more fake words where I'm just gonna write blah 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 a lot and just you know copy and paste and um, just make it look like a paragraph a lot of a paragraph come on let's let's go um, generally I'll just write with my little outline on the like where it is and work on whatever paragraph I need to work on and write as much as I can and then here um, I'm putting a sample claim so here's like uh, everyone who attends these parties hardly knows gats a thing about a single thing about Gatsby that's that's the claim um, and then I have to put an introduction a mini like introduction to the quote so 
I put Nick notes because Nick is the one and I put quote because I know that I have a quote for later. I'll put the word quote, I'll bold it. Generally I put another word there so I could not mess up my bold face. But I'll bold it so that way when I'm scrolling through the paper later, um, I'd be like, oh crap, where did I put quote? I could also do control find to find it, but I'm not good, or control F to find it. But this is just easier so I could just scroll through and write the rest of the paper, putting more blahs because we're making a fake paper here. Production value is going really well. Um, but yeah, I'll continue my paper, worry about it later until I finish and go where I need to go. That way I'm not like, not in the groove of writing and then having to stop to go look for the quote and then having to get back into like the the set I mindset I was in. Back to keyboard session and do my conclusion, which we're just saying like, yeah, this is after I finish my paper. I also forgot to mention, um, page numbers for MLA is top right corner, last name, your last name, put a space, and then put the page number, just into page numbers, and you can also edit it, and make sure it is in time, New, Times New Roman, and 12 point font, so it matches the rest of your paper. You will get points marked if you don't have either, or any of those things. Uh, by the time I finish the paper, I'll go back to the quote area, delete that, and actually put in the quote, and the quote that I had, um, I'm editing a bit, because it was... I I think it was the first one was I but here I just added he in brackets because I am editing the quote um to fit my point so he was one of the few guests who had actually been invited people weren't invited they went is the quote I think and um that quote is two sentences long so Generally, when you do a quote from LA, whatever the last ending part is, if it has a period, you don't put the period. You put the quotation. You're gonna see that in a second. You're gonna put the quotation, like the symbol. Then you're gonna put a parentheses, put the page number, and then put a period. Because my entire paper is only being quoted by Fitzgerald's Great Gatsby, I only put the page number. But if I was using several sources, I would use the last name of the author of that certain source I was using. Um, so then. That's my evidence, is the quotation, and then I add more blogs, but that's my commentary of explaining that, and that's how I write all of those sections. The next section I'm going to be going over is the OWL Purdue website. So you go to owl.purdue.edu backslash owl backslash Purdue underscore owl.html to access the Purdue University online writing lab which is very helpful um i've been using this like i said since the sixth grade um they have an mla guide which is what i'm gonna be going through they also have an apa guide or chicago guide if you need to write in those styles it depends on your teacher slash professor on what style you have to write on for a paper um on the mla it has a whole bunch of little workshops and overviews but we're going to go through the formatting and style guide to show you like specifics of what to do there or how to get help for certain things so on the main page for the formatting guide it has like a little summary a page format and general guidelines like how big your paper should be um double space um font and um font size uh headers footnotes uh margin sizes are also there like how you need to have them for there's also how to format your first page because um as far as i've done mla papers there isn't really a title page unless required and there's, a, there's another way to do that but it's a whole other situation so there's also like sample pages and section headings which for so far i haven't had oh i had one professor who needed us to do section headings um but it was only once and it tells you how to do that if you are required to do so how to i think cite books is what that was as well as other stuff on the left hand side there are more specific sec like section sub tabs to look at so we're gonna look at the works cited sample page as well as um site yeah quotation formatting and notes and footnotes and a powerpoint presentation and um the mla 8 changes
because there there were changes and updates to it. So for a sample works edit page, um, I don't really like can do all this. I use a generator website, um, and if I need to fix it, I'll fix it. But for the most part, I don't. That's how it should be though. Um, and then for quotations, this is how I cite stuff. Short quotations are generally about one to I think maybe two, well, one to maybe three sentences because they're short. Longer quotations are four and up sentences, and those are block quotes. And it tells you how to do that and how to where to put the like page number slash author name. And um, it also talks about adding and omitting words, like I did in the Great Gatsby example, where I added he. Or if you need to add an ellipsis, because you're connecting two quotes to making them one short quote. It does that so you don't like make a muck out of, I don't know, the quote. And it just shows like what is the real quote and what is what you added. Then for endnotes and footnotes, it tells you how to do that. Endnotes are a separate page, I believe, and then footnotes go at the bottom of the page. For MLA papers, I haven't had to do either. But I've had to do footnotes for um, my Chicago style papers. And then the PowerPoint presentation is basically everything on that website in a condensed 43 slide presentation where you can download it yourself and save it for later. I've known professors who downloaded the PowerPoint presentation and added it on their student section or their school page. And then here is the changes that were made to the MLA 8th edition. So I wouldn't be a proper English major if I didn't <laughs> give you guys some reading. Um, my first semester here, um, I took my writing one class, which everyone has to take at my school, and I'm pretty sure every school has to take like writing one equivalent class. Um, uh, we had to read. I can't remember her name right now. I think it's Anna something. I don't know, but I'm gonna link a copy of her article or paper, like a copy of the thing I read called Shitty First Drafts, which basically tells you like your first drafts are going to be shitty. That's that's a gist of like a first draft. It's not going to be perfect. It's a draft for a reason. So just, you know, do it. Screw it all up if you want. Like don't like completely mess around. I don't know, you have to turn it in, but like don't sit there and have the expectation like this has to be a perfect draft because it's a draft and you're bound to make mistakes. And that's what turning in the draft is for, so you can realize like your mistakes or see what can be done better. That's it for this week's video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more from me, subscribe to my channel. I post videos every Saturday. If you want to hear more from me, go ahead and follow me on all my social media accounts. All those links will be in the down below. And I will see you all next week with a new video. I hope this one was like informative and helpful. Good luck in your writing, happy writing, all the good stuff. I hope you did get a good grade. Um, I can't guarantee you get an A or B. I mean, that's up to you and how much effort you put into your writing, but at least this will help you not, like, be totally stuck, I'm hoping. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll see you all with a new video, but until then, bye!